However, I stayed Coogee down to the socks. What up, y'all? Welcome to Let Box TV. Today, I got a goodie for y'all. Um, But before we get into it, make sure y'all hit the like button, the share, subscribe, and notification bell uh, to get these uh, videos out there and get these algorithms going so we can spread this information. All right, so let's get right into it. Let's let it. Oh, you yeah, we lit. Lip box. When I'm turned up, it go down. You know how I get, you know how I get. You know I'm legit, you know I'm legit. You know I be lit, you know I be lit. And I'm on a mission to hit every city. When you see me get with me, it's lit. Lit box TV. It's lit. Have mothers become like correction officers to their children? That's the question today. It gets a little deeper, but that's mainly the question today. And in this, uh, in this piece right here, I, I use an analogy like the mother is the correction officers. The children of the inmates and the father, the fathers would be like the family members that's coming to see the inmates, right? The relatives to the inmates, right? So just stay with me. We gonna, we, we, we headed somewhere. Just stay with me. Okay. I know a few women that are, are correction officers and a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them don't like their job, right? It wasn't like that when they first got the job. Most of them really liked their job when they first got it. Um, they was excited, they were happy, and everybody was happy for them, you know. But then uh, some years down the line, uh, they began to uh, resent the job and, and, and felt obligated to the job because the job took up so much of their time and their energy, right? And they felt drained. I think that's the same thing like with motherhood. When the mother is pregnant and she's all excited about giving birth and then she give birth and then she she has the baby and then you know years go on and the things don't work out whatever with the father and then she just feels obligated to being a mother and uh, or a single mother and you know that's not really what she signed up for right so uh but why do these uh correction officers hate their job like I just said, they hate their job because it's very demanding of their time and their energy. And I think a lot of women start to hate motherhood because it's very demanding of their time and their energy. The excitement is short-lived when she's no longer, and the excitement is really sometimes short-lived when she's just not attracted to the father anymore, or the father's just not there, you know, and, she, and, and yet she's feels obligated to be in the mother right so stay with me because we're going somewhere yeah we're going we're going to go there today when you're a correction officer there's mandatory overtime and i'm not talking about the overtime you sign up for uh you may have to do overtime because some some inmate tried to escape right if you ever been locked up and you know what happens you know what happens when somebody tried to escape they shut everything down nobody's going nowhere we don't care what you got to do we don't care if you got to go to a wedding after this a funeral we don't care it's shut down we need to find this inmate right or it could be a more common reason like um like the officer that's supposed to do the shift after you don't show up if you're a correction officer and the person that's supposed to uh, relieve you of your shift does not show up, then you have to stay there and until that, until that relief comes. Or you have to find somebody to fill in that slot. Or you can't go nowhere. That's, that's just what it is. If you don't find anybody to fill in for that absent co-worker, then it's on you. And the Department of Corrections could really care less about what you had going on after you leave here. Right, and so it, it's it's kind of equivalent to a father not showing up uh, to help with the child. You know that that makes women angry and bitter, and they start to regret having the baby. It's like if it's the same way as like if you got to be somewhere and your coworker don't show up to relieve you, then you're gonna be mad at that coworker. And I done seen some officers really get into it with each other because it's like, yo, come on, man, like I got things to do. Like, what are you doing, right? They want to go out with the girls, but they can't because it's, it's, it's their turn to watch the baby or it's your turn and you showed up late, right? And, and if they can't find someone to watch the baby, then they can't go out and they want to go out, okay? So who, who do they blame? They blame the person they had the baby with. Like you blame your coworker. Like if you don't show up when you're supposed to show up, then I'm, I'm going to be mad at you. 
right? So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm saying a lot of these women are justified. The, the, the anger and the frustration is very justifiable, right? They want to do other things and they don't have anyone to help do their mommy or daddy shift and it makes them angry. And that anger often turns into resentment for the children. She's like the correction officer now. That's stuck doing overtime and become nasty to the inmates. If you've ever been locked up, you know what I'm talking about. You've seen the officer that's about to get off and she's uh, she's high in spirit and she's feeling good because it's the end of her shift. And then and then when the other officer's supposed to come do the count, you see her coming to do the count. You're like, hey, Miss Smith, what are you still doing here? She's like, leave me alone. Like, she don't even want to be bothered. Like, she's there physically, but emotionally, she's somewhere else. And she really could care less what the inmates are doing as long as they don't do anything that makes it appear like she's not doing her job, right? And uh, and all and, and, and all the all uh, correctional officer is is really just an adult babysitter. They just, they just watch adults all day. That's all they really do, right? So, and a lot of women... There's a lot of women that feel that because they provide food, clothing, and shelter for their babies, that they're a good mother. And to those women I ask, is prison good because it provides food, clothing, and shelter for inmates? Is Rikers Island good because it provides food, clothing, and shelter to inmates? Absolutely not. So always remember that just because you provide food, clothing, and shelter for your children does not make you a good mother. It takes more than food, clothing, and shelter to be a good mother. And we're going to get into that in a minute. Or just to be a good parent or a good father. In jail, along with food, clothing, and shelter, often comes chaos and violence, right? See, once the excitement in the new job fade, the inmates begin to get on the, the officer's nerves, then she, she, she starts to hate that job. Now, couple that with the co co-workers not show, uh, coming in late and, and stuff like that. She just be fed up with the job as a whole, right? But she's stuck because now she has expenses that she didn't have before the job. Uh, and it's like once that baby fever is over and the baby starts to act like his or her father, that's probably not around, then she starts to hate motherhood. You know, not the children, not necessarily she's hating the children, but she hates being a mother. And that's why you see so many of these kids with their auntie or with, with, with grandma, you know, or with everybody else but the mother. Because a lot of these women, they just, they, they, they thought motherhood was one thing and then they realize it's so demanding of your time and energy. And, and, and it's very frustrating when you don't get the help that you thought you was going to get. It's very frustrating when, when you don't get the relief at work that you thought you was going to get so you could go on about your business and do some of the things that make you happy, right? Stay with me. I'm going somewhere with this, right? Like I said, in this analogy, the mother is the correction officer and the father is the parent of the inmates and the inmates are the children. If your child is in jail, men, I'm talking to men now, Men, if your child is in jail, you have to make sure you check up on them and stay in contact with them because if you don't, it increases the chance of them getting lost in the system, right? If you got a child in, 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 in jail and you don't check up on them then, then, and, and the system sees that, then the system is more likely to take advantage and mistreat your children because they feel like there's no one there for them, okay? A lot of children are getting lost in the system of of this modern motherhood, right? And, and they're lost. And to me, they're lost because their fathers are not checking up on them. Like I said, if you if you got somebody in jail, you got a family member in jail and you don't check up on them, they're most likely to get mistreated by the system if, once the system finds that there's no one that's going to really protect them, right? It's like, it's like the inmate that gets no mail and no visits from family members. His time in prison is often worse than the inmates that get packages and visits from family members. He's not able to cope with the situation like they are, okay? Having some support, no matter, if you're in a tough situation, having support just makes it less tougher, right? So it's our job as fathers to protect our children. An absent father means no protection for his children, the children get no protection when you when the father is not there. Okay, so when you see my son and you see my daughter, uh, 
Those are children that were protected by their father. And you could tell by the way they act. Like when you, if anybody who know my children know, they'll, they'll, my children are well mannered. They very respectable. They take care of themselves and they present themselves well because that comes from being protected. So, eh, quick question: What do you think does more harm to a person in jail? Now, think about this before you just jump out the window. What do you think? does more harm to a person in jail a correction officer that comes in every day and talk to them and, and talk to them like they're pieces of shit or no family coming to see them at all what does more damage to a, a, a man in jail what do you think does more damage uh the fact that his family is not sending him any mail or or coming to visit him or every day there's uh, some correction officer disrespecting him and, and mistreating him what do you think will affect him more on a day-to-day -day basis on a daily basis day-to-day -day, okay what would what would make your life harder your family not coming to see you or the correction officers dealing with you like you ain't shit to them every day what would make your bid harder To me, the correction officer. Translation, a bad mother that's present is worse than an absent father. What a present mother is doing to her child has a bigger impact than what their absent father is not doing. I'm going to say that again. I'm telling you, I got to stay with me because I'm going somewhere with this. A bad mother that's present, that's in the child's life, is worse than a father that's not in the child's life. What a present mother, what a mother that's there with the child is doing to her child has a bigger impact than what the father that's not there is not doing. Okay? Now, I'm not trying to throw mothers under the bus. I'm just stating the facts. But what I am going to do is I am going to throw some of these fathers right under the bus. Right? Because y'all are the reason that she's able to mistreat the children. If your children are being mistreated by their mother, it's your fault as their father because it's your duty to protect them. Okay? It's a man's duty to protect his children even from their mother. That is our duty as men. Okay? If it wasn't if it wasn't for me, God knows where my son would be after his mother kicked him out for no other reason, but he just reminded her of me, okay? And a lot of young men suffer from that and go through that. A lot of women, oh, you just like your father, you know, that, 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 all of that. A lot of us heard that. A lot of us heard that, right? So many, and then there's another thing. So many women lie like they don't talk bad about the father of their children to their children because to admit that is to admit that you deliberately and intentionally damage your child emotionally, mentally, and spiritually because that's what happens to your children when you talk bad about their father to them. You're telling them that something I come from, if something I come from ain't shit, then I must be partly, a part of me must not be shit because I come from that. That's how it translates to a young person, whether you believe that or not. That's what it translates to, okay? And, and I'm saying all this to say what? The problem is never more important than the solution. I know that's my saying, right? So let's talk about the problem first. Then we're going to talk about what I believe is a solution. The problem, one of the problems is she does not want to be a mother anymore. Okay, a lot of women, after a kid get a certain age, you know, they 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 just don't want to be a mother anymore. Um, she wanted to be a mother before she became a mother, just like she wanted to be a correction officer before she became a correction officer until she got the job, and 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 that's one problem, right? Another problem is you deadbeat men are allowing these women that kick and scream and complain about being a mother like it's some curse to destroy your children's spirit. Okay, 
you letting them send them to auntie. You letting them send them to grandma. And I'm not saying there's nothing, anything wrong with grandma or auntie because a lot of these kids wouldn't have made it if it wasn't for grandma or auntie. But if you, uh, if you're their father, then that should not be taking place. You should be there to step up. That's one thing, right? You absent fathers are just sitting back and watching your children get lost in the system. Okay? Now let's talk about the solution. Let's talk about the solution. And I'm a, I have a question. Can you blame someone for wanting to quit a job that they hate? No, you wouldn't blame somebody for wanting to quit a job that they hate. It's like working somewhere that you hate. You don't hate the people, you don't necessarily hate the people at your job. You just hate the job itself. You might have, you may ha hate the commute. You may, you may hate uh, the work hours. You, 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 you may hate the pay, you know. Um, you, you, you may feel not feel appreciated by the, 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 the bosses and, you know. And I'm not saying that women hate their children, okay. I'm saying that a lot of women hate taking care of their children, especially when the father is not around to help them. Okay? That makes it even worse. Imagine going to work and having to do other people's job on top of having to do your job. And if you didn't do your co-worker's duties, then society would look at you like you were a lousy employee. Like, that's enough to make somebody say, oh, I quit. You know, I don't want to do this anymore. You know, imagine you doing all the work and, 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 and getting half the credit or the person you're doing some of the work for is... is, is, is it's acting like you're supposed to do that. Like, this is what you're supposed to do. Okay? You're supposed to play your part. You're not supposed to play their part. Like, like, see, if you have a baby, then you're supposed to want to, you're supposed to take care of that baby whether the father there is, not, uh, is there or not. But there's a part of raising a child that a woman just cannot do whether she wants to do it or not. And that's being a father. No woman can be a father. So you have to step up and be a father. Men have to step up and be a father, regardless of how you feel about the child's mother, right? A lot of women quit being mothers by the time their child turns seven. They're not excited about it anymore, and they do the bare minimum. Like I said earlier, the, the, the food, clothing, and shelter, nothing else, because emotionally, mentally, and physically, they are not there, and the only time they connect with the children on a mental or emotional level is when something goes wrong. If you've been in jail, then you know correction officers, what they do when they start their shift. They come in, nobody move, it's time for the count. They take the count and they go right back in their bubble. <laughs> they don't engage with the inmates. They take the count, make sure everybody's where they need to be and go right back in the bubble. A lot of modern mothers are like that. They come in the house, they check on the kids, they make sure none of the kids are missing. Yo, where's your brother? Oh, he, all right, okay, cool. Yeah, you ate? All right, cool. Uh, but you, you, you wash your clothes? Okay, cool, all right. And go right in their room. Watch TV, jump on social media. They don't really engage with the children. The only time they come out of that room and engage with the children is if it's something's go if something goes wrong. You know, you hear the kids fighting or, or something like that. But it's they not. It's just like they just like correction officers, right? And the only time the correction officers come out of that bubble is when the inmates are fighting, or they got to take the count. They really don't engage. Right? If the only way I get attention is when I act up and I want some attention, then what do you think I'm going to do to act up? Or what do you think I'm going to do to get some attention? I'm going to act up. And that's why a lot of kids, they just act up just to get their mother out the room, just to get some attention. You know? Like a lot of dudes in jail, they'll act up just, just, just to get some attention. Because they ain't, they ain't getting no attention from daddy. Nobody coming to visit them and nothing. And, 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 you know, so they'll just act up. And, and that's you know, they, they in a the goddamn box. You know, so, um, but on the flip side, right, there are some correction officers that engage with the inmates and are cool and enjoy their job. I've met a few. Most of them are not like that, but there are a few. There's always exceptions to the rule. There are a few uh, correction officers I've met that, that made being in jail a lot easier, okay, because they wasn't so hard on all the inmates, Okay, they didn't let, let everything that was going on in their life uh, stop, turn them into just somebody nasty, right? 
You know, there are a lot of women that enjoy being, uh, uh, really enjoy being mothers, right? Just like there's a lot of fathers that really enjoy being fathers. I'm one of them. Like, like it's the fuel to my engine. Like, I just love fatherhood, right? I love, I love teaching. That's why I started Litbox TV. And, and, and who better to teach than your children, right? So, but imagine your coworker walking out on a job and then complaining to you about how you're not doing a good job doing what they're supposed to be helping you do. Like, that's enough to drive a person insane. You know, like you imagine you walk out on a woman and then now you complain in the hub about how the kids are coming out when you ain't helping the the, the, the kids come out the way they supposed to. You understand what I'm saying? And, 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 and that's why a lot of mothers, especially single ones, are so irrational, selfish and inconsiderate towards their children and men. Right. Because their father or the father of their children was irrational, selfish, and, and inconsiderate to them. Now, you know, like you, you say, people say, oh, you can't just be blaming. It's just accountability. Somebody, if somebody got to take the blame, if something happens, it's somebody's fault. We can't all just be escaping blame. Something, if something happened, then it's somebody's fault that something happened. Things don't just happen, you know? Like I remember telling my baby mother, right? Stop talking to my kids like that. Hey, they not just your children, and she say, "Well, they don't listen." And I say, "Well, you don't listen either, you, and you, you don't want, you wouldn't want me talking to you like that." She say, "Yeah, but I'm not your child," as if because they were her children, that gave her the right to be disrespectful towards them. That's a lot of women's mentality. You understand? But see, this is the thing: girls are born, women are made, and black marriage is on the decline because women are not. Uh, teaching other women how to be wives because their mothers didn't teach them how to be a wife. Their mother taught them how to be independent thinkers and don't depend on no man and all this other nonsense, right? And boys are born. Men are made. Black boys are out here acting like fools because black men are not taking the time to make them men because of a, a lot of black men. A lot. M more like a lot of black men have that boy still have that boy mentality and the boy can't teach a boy how to be a man now i say all this to say what men and i'm talking to men right now and men only okay because this is this is really what this is is really about okay men if you have children with these modern women then you must look at it like having a child in jail and their mother is the correction officer that hates her job. Not all of them, not all of them, but a lot of them. She don't necessarily hate the children, but she hates being a mother because it took away her freedom to come and go as she please. Okay? Now, so, if you don't answer to that child, when your child, when you, if you don't answer to your child when they reach out, if you don't visit them, if you don't send them, if you don't put no money on their books, if you're not in court with them when they're on trial with their mother, then don't complain when the children get lost in the system of modern motherhood because it's your fault as a man. It's your fault. Because you didn't use every method and bone in your body to protect your children. You have to be there physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and financially for your children. Regardless of your relationship with their mother. I don't care if she cheated on you. I don't care if she stole out your wallet. I don't care what she did. That should never take away from what you're doing for your children okay the love for your children should always be greater than the hate for their mother okay stop letting the hate you have for a woman turn you into a sucker because that's what men who don't take care of their children are suckers okay and we and everybody know how i feel about suckers right so in conclusion i'm gonna say this the revolution will not be televised because the revolution is individualized.
The problem is never more important than the solution. I am, you are the revolution. Okay? I'm going to say that again. The problem is never more important than the solution. The revolution will not be televised because the revolution is individualized. You are, excuse me, the revolution will not be televised because the revolution is individualized. The problem is never more important than the solution. You are, I am, the revolution. And I'm out. Peace. It's when I'm turned up, it go down. You know how I get, you know how I get. You know I'm legit, you know I'm legit. You know I be lit, you know I be lit. And I'm on a mission to hit every city. When you see me, get with me, it's lit. Lit Box TV. It's lit.